emerald set. Um, earlier in the week, uh, Linda gave a presentation on data life cycles, and we saw lots of visualizations of the data life cycle. This is yet another visualization. But it's only there just to say that what we're talking about is the end of the life cycle, where we're giving access to data and we are reusing the data. And if we actually drill down into those sections, what those two sections are all about is really data publication. Now, this week we've been talking about activities in the data publication workflow, in fact. But what we're going to do today is just talk about the end of the data publication workflow, where you can see that we're going to allocate, allocate permanent IDs and publishing data and citing the data. Learning outcomes, uh, I think they're pretty obvious. I hate to say that after this session, you're probably going to get sick and tired of hearing the phrases data publication and data citation. And I'm sorry about that, but you will know what it means. You'll understand why it's important. And in fact, we've already gone over those parameters because Greg did it very nicely when he talked about open data. And really, data publication is open data, making data freely available. I'm going to talk about the various venues and options for data publication. You'll be looking at some citation standards, um, and then I'm going to ask you to do exercises on formulating citations. It's not rocket science. And one of the things I will say to you is, with citations, is consistency. You decide on your format, and you stick to it. What is really bad is when you change your formats all the time. But we will come to that anyway. Every one of our presentations seems to have had a definition in front of it, so here's one for data publication. Um, and it could actually be the same for open data, because it's making data freely accessible or at marginal cost, because of course sometimes there are small admin processing costs. Permanently available, which is very important on the internet, along with information to trustworthiness, reliability, format, content that will enable discovery and reuse, i.e. metadata, which you all did some super exercises on the other day. Data publication is a strange term, in fact, and it was very obvious, uh, I think it was on Monday when we went round the room and you were all talking about your data publication activities, there was a, quite a variability on what you thought data publication was all about. And this is what this slide is all about, because there isn't really a widely understood and accepted definition of it. Publication in different disciplines means different things, in fact, and there are different assumptions about it. So it doesn't apply to one system or one method. What data publication means, perhaps, to a biologist might not mean the same to a physical scientist. But data publication, of course, can take many forms, and we're going to be talking about these standalone data as just a data set. You can get appendix data to reports, and, of course, there are the supplementary data to journal articles. But there are other formats as well. Now, one of the things that we do seem to hear interchangeably is that data publication or data sharing are synonyms. They're the same thing. But in fact, they're actually not quite the same. Um, data sharing is much more about private sharing. And I think you've all heard the term the invisible university, where researchers have their own small grouping of people that they will share their data with. Sometimes it's by putting something on the website or possibly offering a record in a database. But data publication is much, much more than that, in fact. And it's public sharing, of course. Oh, I'm not being filmed. Sorry. Data sharing um, is about public sharing. It's very much part of the scholarly communication cycle. It uses best practices. It uses standards. And it ensures that um, it can be searched and discovered and effectively used. It has to be citable so that we can find it. Persistent access, permanent access, and we're talking about permanent and preservation and what those really mean. And again, quality assurance, because um, there has to be some sort of um, review process, if you like, of data sets uh, within the uh, record. 
The problem is that data publication is been, has been, perhaps is not becoming, but certainly has been a second class citizen because there's been no incentives to make data available. Publication of the raw data doesn't have the same weight as um, a, a journal article, for example. So you're not going to get promotion by actually working and producing a data set. Not at the moment, in fact, but things are changing. So the effort to produce data is not actually highly rated. And, the, and it's a shame because, as we heard at the very beginning of the week, it's the key to science success and science progress. And again, I'm going to go through these, but we saw them on Monday. It, it, it encourages multiple perspectives. Uh, it builds a community of collaborators. It can help identify errors, and maybe that's what researchers worry about. If I let my data out, you know, I'm going to be found out. It discourages fraud and misuse of data, and a lot of researchers do worry about making their data public, that somebody will misuse the data in a bad way, using some statistics to prove a, uh, or use it for evidence for a case in which it wasn't actually designed to do. So they do worry about that. Um, Jen talked about training new researchers, and of course, new researchers do need data management skills. Um, and having these data sets available, they're able to take them and work with them and build their own research uh, profiles, etc. The obvious one is efficient use of funding and resources. You don't duplicate your, your data collection. And experimental data is very expensive to verify, and observa observational data, probably you would never repeat that um, experiment. Although you, do, you are going to have I IIOE2, where you've got some baseline data and you're going to be able to go back and compare the uh, original data.